All right. So I'm going to be presenting on whether or not Jackson Pollock's pieces reflect the same feelings uh, uh, transcribed by the post-apocalyptic um, aspects of World War II society and by myself, James L. So for the background, there's three main terms that you should know. The abstract expressionist movement is the first one. It is primarily, it was uh, created during the times of war as, um, as a way for people to express themselves. It's formed through obviously abstract pieces and some major influential key members were people such as Jackson Pollock, Franz Klein, and Mark Rothko. The other thing that you should know is World War II and what emotions stem from that, how people were feeling, what were the societal beliefs during that time, as that is what I'm gonna be examining. And finally, Jackson Pollock, who's one of the main and key influential figures during this time uh, and truly represented this era, and he's the main person that I'm going to be looking at. So for my literature review, I split it up into three sections. The first being color and emotion, the second being value and emotion, the third being Jackson Pollock and his feelings towards World War II. So for source one, color and emotion, uh, I looked at um, the article, Relationship Between Color and Emotion, A Study of College Students, by Naz Kaya and Helen H. Epps. Uh, Kaya and Epps, they used a participant in psychological study of college students and examined what they were feeling and whether or not their emotions were positive when uh, uh, given a certain color. We, they looked at 13 specific colors, five basic, which included red, yellow, uh, green, blue, and uh, purple. They looked at five intermediate, which was red, yellow, uh, yellow, blue, blue, green, green, purple, and purple, red. And then finally, three chromatic colors, which were black, gray, and white. The second source, or sorry. What they found between this is that um, colors such as black or any sort of darker colors are more associated with negative emotions. Uh, and co lighter colors with lighter hues and saturation were associated with positive emotions. For example, red, uh, but then there are some outliers such as red, which can be associated with both negative and positive emotions, such as love versus blood. So in specific, with the primary colors, um, red was uh, primarily positive, whereas blue was also primarily positive, and yellow was then again primarily positive. However, with blue, um, they found that it can also lead to feelings such as depression, sadness, and anxiety. The intermediate colors, they were all over the place. They determined that they can't truly link um, and emotion towards each color. And finally, with the chromatic colors, black and gray were the most known as they were always associated with negative emotions, and white was always associated with positive emotions, such as peace and calamity. For the second source that I examined, I uh, looked at value and emotion, specifically within the article, Children's Emotional Associations with Colors by Chris J. Boyatis and Varghese. And it was another participant in psychological study, except this time it, is, it examined children's and their emotions with colors. However, I did not look into the color aspect of this source and rather the value aspect, as that was one of my categories within my methodology, as I will get to that later. They separated uh, value, which is how dark or bright something is, into three specific categories, dark, medium, and light. And what they found from that is that dark values were obviously um, associated with most of the negative emotions, medium being the next and light without any. They also tended to find that um, young boys ended up choosing dark and medium colors, they could have a higher chance of relaying them with positive emotions. The final source that I looked at was Jackson Pollock's uh, um, In the Cultural Context of America, in between 1943 and 1956, during the time of, during the time of World War II, um, and how this related to the un-American activities by Katie Robinson Edwards. And the methodology was an analysis of social responses. These responses came from all different places, such as news articles to separate participants. And what she found out of this, um, out of this experiment was that Paula completely opposed the war and capitalism in general, and instead was 
more of a communist and wanted more um, peace within our world. So um, for, the, for the process, for the background of the process, the problem statement that I have is how have people reflected and expressed themselves during times of uncertainty? And the way that I'm gonna look at this is by examining a key influential figure, also known as Jackson Pollock, and how he portrayed his emotions. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna examine some of his pieces through a content analysis. The two pieces that I chose to examine were She-Wolf and War. She-Wolf is an oil painting in 1943 that displays the narrative of Romulus and Remus. Whereas War is a color pencil drawing that quite literally displays war. I chose both of these uh, because War is most associated with uh, World War II and how he felt about that. And I wanted to see if she will, one of his other pieces, could relate back to War. So this is she Wolf, And for my methodology, I applied a, um, a 7 by 11 grid. And I examined each one of these squares within e within a contact within sorry two subcategories, uh, color and value. I ended up eliminating shapes because to do shapes you would have to examine the whole uh, stroke in itself, which as shown here, very long and does not um, coincide with the grid system that I work with. The same thing happened here with board, as I applied except this time I applied a six by ten grid um, so that each of the squares represented the same amount of um, area between each one. So what I found as the results were for She-Wolf here in color, the primary, the, you, um, the primary colors found within each of the examined squares was black, white, red, and yellow. The examined squares were squares without negative space. And negative space is space that isn't occupied by um, the main subject matters. I, I, I eliminated these squares specifically because I'm looking at the subject matter of the piece. Now, within those um, examined squares, 98% uh, of the examined squares, as shown here, was uh, found to contain some sort of black. With white, 79%. With red, 64%, and with yellow, 66%. Now with war, I had to eliminate some of the um, total squares as it did contain negative space. And the primary colors that were found within each of these uh, squares was, once again, black, white, and then this time, it had gray and yellow as well. As shown here, black was uh, the primary leading color, and then it went white, just like in She-Wolf, and then further it changed to gray and finally ended with yellow. So, what does this mean? Well, inside of She-Wolf, if the primary color is black, it is most associated with the negative uh, correlation, whereas with white it's positive, red positive once again, and yellow positive. So overall it portrayed a positive um, sort of meaning in terms of emotions. However, um, red, I ended up going with positive. Uh, as I explained earlier, it could be, it could be uh, varied between negative or positive, but I chose positive because that was how the, uh, the participants inside of Kaya and F's findings uh, truly demonstrated their feelings towards red. Now with war, um, it, went, it was kind of a, it was more of a negative piece as shown by black being the primary, once again, and then gray also being a primary, and if you add up both of these um, percentages, it's more than uh, what you would get with white and yellow, which were both positive once again. So thus, I chose uh, negative as being the overall uh, emotion associated with war. So for the results within value, I broke it down into three subcategories, dark, medium, and light, and in She-Wolf, it was primarily dark values as found uh, within 35 of the squares. And then 25 of the squares contain medium values and 17 contain light values. In regards to the squares this time, they do add up to um, the complete 77 squares because um, with value, you cannot associate more values within each square as it would uh, contradict the whole purpose of value. The same happened with war. Um, and I, 
once again, only looked at the examined squares, where this time dark and light both had the same amount of squares uh, with that amount of value, whereas medium was 18, uh, only contained 18, of it, uh, 18 of the squares. So what does this mean? Well, it means that she will primarily has a dark value, thus it elicits negative emotions. And then it has medium values, which are also primarily negative emotions, as shown um, by Ber Berge Bergesi's and uh, Boerti's um, results. And then with war, because it had both equally and uh, because it had both equally dark and light values, uh, it had both positive and negative aspects. However, the main determinant was uh, the medium factor, which was 29%, which is around a third of the piece, um, which is very similar to the amount of uh, dark and light values, thus it was still negative. Um, so some of the limitations that I had within uh, my experiment here was with my software. My software first came with pricing. Uh, I wanted to use a different software, but I ended up going with atlas.ti because um, it A, had a student uh, accessible thing, which only cost $50 compared to the other software that would have given me more uh, out of it, but it costs around $1,000. Now, with the methodology, um, I was not able to examine how much of the piece was um, shown by a certain color or value, but instead how many squares contain that. So due to that, um, I can't specifically associate emotions and how much of that emotion is in regard to each piece. On top of that, um, with the methodology, uh, the I wanted to include shape as one of my things, but that wasn't gonna work with the current methodology I had because I did not have a software that can examine how much of the piece is made up by, for example, a certain color or a certain value. So in conclusion, for um, the, there, there was no color uh, linkage between both She-Wolf and Warp, but there was one in value. Overall, I said that there was not um, a connection between the feelings created by Jackson Pollock's uh, piece of war and his uh, piece She Wolf, um, shown by specifically the color, and thus it cannot uh, happen. So, why might this be the scenario? Well, I said that this could be a scenario because they both have different narratives. As shown here, um, war here shows encapsulates sort of the uh, aspects of World War II <laughs> is specifically looking at World War II, and that's how Jackson Pollock felt about this piece, whereas inside of She-Wolf, it goes into the Roman myth of Romulus and Remus and um, how that came about. Thus, they have two separate narratives. So for some future studies, I would want to examine the amount of color and value that would make up each piece through a specific software. The next one that I would, that I would, uh, would find interesting was seeing if different interpretations of each category would, would result inside of different meanings between each piece. So I would use different sources that would examine different age groups um, and see if that would make any difference. And then finally, um, I would see if different artists uh, could link with um, other artists. Do you have a bibliography slide?